Hello and welcome to Learn ADS in 5 Minutes. This is tutorial 53 on compliance limits in the ADS data display. Here is the agenda for this video and it's a pretty exciting topic and I'm sure once you go through this video, you will find the content very useful and you will enjoy using the same in your design work. So first of all, we will learn at, you know, learn how to set up a measurement equation for compliance checking and then uh, look at how do we set the compliance limit masks in the data display as you can see on your screen and also i will give you a teaser of a very interesting feature coming out in ads 2021 update 2 release which is coming out very shortly so stay tuned a lot of interesting content in this video now before we start subscribe to my channel once you subscribe click on the bell icon to enable all the notifications and after you watch the video give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and colleagues who might be interested in watching this kind of video and like always i encourage you to put comments in the comment section below this video to tell me how what you felt about the video content and whether you found this to be useful for your work or not all right so let's go ahead and uh, start learning about each of these topics in a little more detail now to demonstrate the first example i do have a very simple low pass filter circuit which you typically do uh, when you design any you know kind of filter schematic so I do have few variables here and these variables are declaring the frequency limits of my pass band, stop band and the specification in terms of insertion loss and return loss, what I want the circuit to meet. And along with that, I have few you know, measurement equation, which is basically reading these variables. The importance of this measurement equation is that I can also set up an optimization goal. And once I change these any of these parameters, the optimization goal can automatically get updated. And here you can see the way I have set up this goal. I'm using the limits on the y-axis to meet a certain specification of less than, greater than, etc. And also I do have my x-axis variables which are declared in these variable and eventually getting computed by these measurement equations. So this helps us in creating a nice closed loop so that you only need to change these variables, rest everything will happen behind the scene. Now, once I have this basic infrastructure is in place, let's go ahead and simulate. Now, once you have this kind of data display, you can see all the variables uh, or the measurement equation which I had are creating these uh, limit lines. And these limit lines using few equations, I'm checking whether I'm meeting the limit or not. And based on that, I'm throwing out the criteria as pass and fail. So we will look at all these things very quickly, but before we go there, so let me show you, if I insert an S21 plot, for example, now once I have this S21 plot, how do I insert my limit line? Well, I can go to insert. There's a limit line option, which you can pick or there is a mask. Both have pretty similar behavior, but with very slight difference. So in this case, I'm going to use limit line. And here I can use greater than, because let's say if I want to draw any line for the pass band, I, might, I want my response to be greater than that. So once I have uh, this selected, I click on one point and then I click on another point and you can see there is a limit line which got inserted. Similarly, I can keep on inserting this limit line on any graph I want. Now, once you have this limit line, basically what are the attributes of this? If I double click on this limit line, you can change the thickness, you can choose the color you want. But more importantly, if you look in the data points, it's basically looking two X extents and two Y extents. So depending upon from where to where you want that line to be, let's say 10 E6, which is 10 megahertz. And I want this limit line to go up to 250 megahertz. So I can enter 250 E6. And then in terms of Y axis, let's say my goal is to have minus three dB and I have minus three dB. Once I click OK, you can see this limit line gets drawn based on the specification. Now, the way I have set up here is slightly different because I already have the variables and I want these limit lines to follow those variables. So if I double click on the limit line, 
uh, what you will notice I'm using the same variables which I declared in the schematic measurement equation so this way these limit lines will become dynamic now how do I do this compliance checking well if you look in the page here I have three sets of equation two for the passband uh, compliance validation and one for the written laws uh, compliance validation well so first thing I need to do is s21 so if you click on s21 you can notice the dependency of s21 it is a frequency array and there are 50 points so first thing I need to do is simply use this function to find two limits of my passband and this is again the variable which I set in the schematic and then I filter out the s21 response only in the band of frequency where i want to do the compliance checking and then i simply set up uh, greater than less than whatever condition you want to check and finally i compute the variable called il underscore passband and based on the condition what i find it will be either fail or pass right so it's very very simple equation and once you set it up you can save it as a template so that you can keep on using it as you go along so if you look at this table i am plotting the same three uh, variables which i computed using equation to demonstrate pass and fail so now let me show you how it is dynamic so let's say I change my passband limit to 250 megahertz. Now I know for sure my insertion loss will fail the passband limit as well as the return loss. But let's see how, how the data display gets changed. So let's go ahead and simulate this. Now you can see the limit line extends to 250 megahertz, both for uh, the insertion loss as well as the return loss. And now I have two failures because this is not adhering to the limit or this is not meeting the specification isn't that simple you don't need to place any markers don't need to check you know point by point you directly get the result and once you do that once you implemented the equation just simply go to file save as template and then you can use it again and again in every workspace which you create and i already have a video showing how to do all these kind of stuff so that's uh, how simple it is to come up with your own compliance validation. Now, before we move on, let me quickly show you another example. And this is the same uh, kind of equation, but this time we are doing it on band pass. Hence, you can see I have uh, you know, two uh, pass band limits and I have the high band rejection criteria and the lower side rejection criteria. So only one set of equation will increase, but in that, and at the end of the day, you can see the limit on the lower rejection, higher rejection, and the pass band, and you can see whether you're passing or failing. Now, this is one technique where we are driving everything from a schematic. So let's say if I have to change any of the limits, you will need to go back to schematic you will need to make the changes here and then you need to simulate what if you want little more dynamic control uh, and you want to be little you know get more response in a quick amount of time rather than you going back to schematic so here in this template what i've done i created a mode selector and currently it is on a schematic mode that means it is reading all these limits coming from a schematic result but if i change the mode to dds now I have a set of variables declared in DDS and the limit lines dynamically change based on that. So how did I achieve that? Again, a very simple logic. Uh, these equations are the same as I showed you earlier. Now I have four set of calculations being done, three for the uh, insertion loss, one for the written loss. And here simply I created an, a string array, a schematic and DDS. And then I am choosing these variables whether it is from a schematic set or these are the variables declared in the data display. So based on the mode I select, I choose the right parameter to be passed. And based on that, I'm doing rest of my calculation. Very, very simple. So this way you can do your compliance checking very quickly. All right, so hopefully this uh, is pretty nice for your design work and you would be able to use it. Now, let me show you what is the one new feature coming in ADS 2021 update two. And there are lots and lots of improvement, but I'm going to only show you one 
interesting feature. So here we are looking at the same low pass filter, which I showed you earlier. And now if I go ahead and run the simulation, notice what you see on data display. Well, the first thing you notice, you have a schematic picture. So I took a snapshot of a schematic and now I inserted that into my data display because in the new ADS version, you are going to have this file, you know, picture object. You can place this picture object anywhere and you can source to any picture file, PNG, JPEG or BMP, uh, those kind of images. And then you would be able to insert your own image. Not only that, you see what I have done here. I have two smiley faces and currently it's a happy smiley because I'm passing all the specification. Now, what if I go back to my schematic and let's say I, um, you know, knowingly fail my limit. So now I know my filter will fail, right? So let's go ahead and run simulation and see what happens. Now you see the smiley changes indicating you have a failure. So you can not only insert the image, but you can even make it um, equation controlled images. So you can have a bunch of equations using some conditional statement. If then else you can even you know, change the, the behavior. And this will help you make your data display look quite attractive. If you take a snapshot, put it in your PowerPoint or PDF reports. This will make your life a little more colorful, a little more fun. Remember, RF microwave doesn't need to be boring. We can make it interesting. And again, as I said, there are tons of features upcoming in the new release of ADS, and I will make those tutorial videos once we have the official release out. That's all for this video. Thanks a lot for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the content presented. Again, don't forget to put your valuable comments in the comment section below this video and give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and colleagues. Happy designing, my friends.